The job title perfumer really tells you what that person does. They make perfume. But how does someone make perfume? With science, of course. We sent Nabil to sniff us out a story. The human nose can distinguish just about one trillion smells. Yeah, that's trillion with a T. While some occur naturally, others are created in labs. Like the smell of cleaning products or the scent of your mom's favorite candle. Which, by the way, while I'm here, am I the only one whose mom is obsessed with buying candles? She bought like 40 of her favorite scent, linen drying in the sunshine. But what makes our favorite smells smell so good? Today, I'm here at the Institute of Art and Olfaction, and I'm about to meet with an expert perfumer named Julianne Lee. I became a perfumer through my love of scents. I went to college for art and philosophy, and I've always loved creating things, and I realized there are people who make perfumes, and I wanted to join them. So, I hear you are a perfumer. What exactly does that mean? It means that I am the person who creates the formulas behind a lot of the smells that you might encounter in your life. Wow, so I'm hearing formulas. Does that mean that there's chemistry involved? Yes, indeed. So it's a really interesting mix of both science and art. You gotta be creative when you're creating these smells, whether they're perfumes or detergents or, you know, a candle in your home. But you also need to know how those chemicals work together, whether it's natural or synthetic compounds. Uh, can I smell some stuff here today? I was thinking that we could make you a custom fragrance using some of my favorite materials. That would be awesome. So what kind of materials do we have in front of us here? We have a variety of natural and synthetic materials, and some absolutes, some essential oils, Ooh. some single molecules even. Oh, some single molecules. So it sounds to me like natural materials have a natural origin, meaning we make them out of things we can find on Earth already, like essential oils and botanical extracts. Julianne explains that synthetic materials, which are created in a lab by chemists, are becoming much more popular, partially because the natural ones are being overly harvested. Here I've pulled some things that are some of my favorite materials that I thought we could use. For our scent creation, Julianne has brought out her best ingredients. The base ingredient is bergamot essential oil, to which we add Rose Absolute. It's so extremely concentrated that it takes 650 pounds of rose damascena petals to make one pound of it. Now that's a lot of roses. If it was between getting my girlfriend 650 pounds of roses or a bottle of perfume, I think my wallet would choose perfume every time. Now the next ingredient is called Blue Tansy Essential Oil. This is another great example of an extremely concentrated scent. In fact, 100% Blue Tansy is so strong, perfumers typically use a diluted form of it. 0.1%, that's just a drop, pretty much. I know, I'm surprised you can still see blue in the 0.1%. And trust me, you can still smell it, that's the wild part. No way. Next, we add benzoine retinoid. This is a sweet-smelling natural material used since the 14th century. After that, we added in a single molecule ingredient called Cetalox, which happens to be the only synthetic ingredient we're using today. And then it was finally time to smell. Here is today's custom concoction wow. for you. How exciting. So we're gonna give it a little swirl. Do you wanna smell it? Oh. It's amazing. I love my custom scent. What are we gonna call it? It's a good question. Science related, but also like captures the essence of the materials we put in. How about stems and roses? Stems and roses, that's brilliant. I can't believe you just came up with that. Okay, you know what this means? We have to do an ad for this. Oh, okay. Stems and roses, a brand new scent from Julianne and Nabil, where science meets beauty. Oh, 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 oh. And with that, I bid you adieu. Oh. Bye, Julianne. Bye. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really. I've seen this one over a hundred times.